In Bristol, Rhode Island, along Narragansett Bay, a cross between Downton Abbey and Bridgerton. Welcome to Blythewald. This English country manor estate boasts a 45-room mansion and seven gardens spread across 33 acres. The name Blythewald is Old English for happy woodland. And uh, this indeed was and is a very happy house. Blythewald is known for its grounds, says gardens and greenhouse manager Gail Reed. She says owner Bessie Van Wickle McGee and her two daughters were passionate horticulturalists. You can't get to know a garden unless you actually work in it. And so I think they had such an attachment and a bond because they were in the gardens all the time. It's a level two accredited arboretum, which means we have like 1,500 different species of shrubs and trees uh, on the property. And they're all labeled so that you can identify them easily. Blythewald's story begins in the late 1890s during the Country Place era, says Blythewald's Director of Communications and Visitor Experience, Tree Callanan. During the Industrial Revolution, uh, people were just dying to get out of the dirty cities. And so the wealth Americans were uh, turning back to nature and looking for these large kind of estates that they could create. Coal mining heirs Augustus and Bessie Van Wickle built Blythewald with fun in mind. They did a lot of sailing. There was also a nine-hole golf course um, on the property and they had uh, like a lawn bowls, which is like bocce. There was grass tennis courts, clay tennis courts. It was quite the life, says curator Margaret Whitehead. Uh, there were sometimes as many as 30 people staying in the house. They loved their special occasions and the dining room was always magnificently uh, decorated with their beautiful European china. Blythewald is historically significant because everything in the mansion is original, from the furniture to the china, despite a fire that destroyed the first house in 1906. It took five hours for the house to burn down completely. As Blythewald burned, townspeople rushed to help firefighters, removing furnishings, artwork, even mantelpieces. They just kept going with the house until it, it literally tumbled down. The, uh, the south wing was crashing to the ground as they were emptying the north wing. They saved objects large and small, including the family's silver, journals, and photos. A hundred dresses belonging to Bessie and her daughters, Marjorie and Augustine, sit neatly wrapped in the archives. This is a, a, a silk lace, bobbin lace. All the uh, beads would have been hand sewn. These items by New York's Fox Dressmaking Company are museum treasures, says Whitehead. Bessie spent a lot of money on dresses, sometimes the equivalent of $10,000 a dress. And she, we do have one receipt of one trip to Fox where she spent the equivalent of $70,000. In 1908, a new Blythewald rose from the ashes. Bessie later left it to her daughters. This house has only ever been owned by women. The elder daughter, Marjorie, left the estate to a nonprofit heritage trust in 1976. Today, Blythewald is home to weddings and concerts, as well as 30,000 annual visitors before the pandemic. Whitehead says most people want to relax in what is now the public's country place. They always say that they feel better when they've been here, that it's very calming. I come here every day as soon as I drive in the front gate. I. I just forget everything else in my life. It's just a wonderful, wonderful place to come. Like many historic houses and museums, Blythewald had its struggles and almost closed in 1998. A group of supporters, including Margaret Whitehead, whom you met in the piece, managed to save the property with a six-week pedal to the metal fundraiser. During the pandemic, the mansion was closed, but visits to the grounds were up significantly. The house is now open again, and tours and special events are occurring. Up next, an estate setting makes for a storybook wedding. 